Just a quick reminder that if you want to support Concepts and Legends, please remember to like and subscribe. And you can also show your support by using our TCG affiliate link for any and all of your magic needs by using the link you see here or below in the description. Any and all help is greatly appreciated and helps us bring you more videos like the one that is starting right now. Chin Dobri. Some people may have just noticed that I didn't say good day in English, and that's because I said it in Polish. Now, before anyone starts a crazy theory like Alper Markov got electrocuted by sticking a fork into a toaster and now lapses into foreign languages without any control or comprehension, which did not happen, the reason I chose Polish is because that is the homeland of today's interview, the extremely talented MTG artist Derek Zabrocki. And now, let's get to that interview. Right. Okay. So, uh, first off, before we, uh, how do I pronounce your name, like, properly? Uh, Derek. Derek? Z yes, Zabrowski. Mm -hmm. Zabrowski, okay. Zabrowski, um, yes. Zabrowski, okay, because, um, is it true that you're, that's not, like, your, your full name was Darius, maybe? Yeah, my real I... name is Darius, yeah. Why, why did you choose that though? Why, why did you go with... Uh... Uh, like, it's very, it's very common that you use like Derek only as a, like a sort of like a abbreviation. Uh, hmm. And I started like uh, promoting myself, like promoting my art like 15 years ago and it was always Derek. So I, when, I, when I set up my company, uh, I kept the real name of the company, Derek Zabrotsky. And of course, if you have like a full name, it's Darius Zabrotsky, Darius Zabrotsky. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but by, by the time, like even if you wanted to change back, it was too late, you'd already established yourself. Yeah, and, and it's good because I can, uh, I can basically work as a company. It's like not just attached to my uh, passport name. It's just like a it's abbreviation. So you can always like work like, with other people. And that's, that sort of like gives me like a more freedom, I would say. Okay, that's cool. All right, I gotcha. Well, I, I appreciate you taking time to talk to me today. Man, it's like a pleasure. <laughs> so uh, I know that you got your start by doing The Lion King at a young age, and that's what got you into art. Um, mm -hmm. When you, what, what was it that, like, what was it about that movie that got you going? I mean, what was the general feeling you got? Because you saw it really young. Uh, thank you very much. A very good question. And I see that you, you prepared uh, very nicely, like dig, dig very deep uh, into like the beginnings. Uh, you know, I think it's like, it's, it's even a little bit hard to say like what just struck my attention in the beginning because I just fell in love in that cartoon. Like I was like three, three years old, so, sort of. Uh, I think I think it, I was free back then uh, when when the movie came out, and I got a, a, a VHS uh, um, tape uh, with with that with that on, so I I could play it like over and over again, and I watched it like uh, five times a day, and like of course I cried when when the moments came, and uh, I was so like I I loved drawing. Uh, I think it was all just synchronized because like s small kids are drawing a lot you know and mm -hmm. and i i started drawing around that time when i basically watched the that movie and and i drew like a lot of scenes and and from the movie but i always wanted to play with my own ideas and of course i don't know why but uh, always those like dark characters were were my favorite so of course the scar because of the dynamics, you know, like the way that he moved, the way he he talked, and the gestures and everything, I think that that was what what really was like super, um, you know, it, it was a big hype for me. Like I, I always loved doing that like dynamic stuff. So along the way, I started basically drawing animals and dinosaurs. So I studied all those subjects. Um, it all started from Lion King, but it evolved to like a different uh subjects yeah because then you you came you you sort of like evolved into uh i wouldn't i wouldn't say that like, you only do this because you have a, a whole lot of um, variety in your work but like you got very uh, accomplished at cityscapes or broad views of of certain things when mm -hmm. did you pick up that style of of drawing and who was your influence there i'm thinking maybe you saw blade runner because i feel like there's some sid mead uh in there oh, de definitely like um 
but I think th th those are the inspirations that came when I when I got more mature with my work and like when, when I really got into concept art because uh, of course for home I childhood and like until like when I was 20 I guess or or, or around that that age I basically loved just drawing and being passionate about everything so I didn't really dig that much into like who is going to inspire me like I loved watching movies documentaries I just try to you know gather as much knowledge on the topic that basically was interesting to me at the time so it wasn't just one one really uh one uh, sort of like source of inspiration but i started picking up like drawing cities very early as well when i was like six or seven because i lived i was born in a city of dansk which is a very heavily old town driven city you know you have a lot of like uh, architecture like baroque um, renaissance uh, gothic we have the biggest uh, Gothic uh, structure in the Europe, uh, which is um, which is uh, Saint Marie Church, and so we got a lot of like amazing iconic uh, old buildings, and and it all basically was an inspiration for me for the beginning on, since the beginning, and I drew that I studied that, and along the way I didn't really pick up uh, what was my main sort of like focus until let's say 2013, 2014, when I got into concept art field and I wanted to um, evolve as a, as a world building artist and environment designer. Uh, these days, it's a bit of everything, you know, like I, I work lately on like a very iconic TV series and I design vehicles, for instance, which is uh, not very uh, often seen in my portfolio and what, what people can expect. But yeah, it's like, uh, as you say, like, as you said, like, the ver variety of work is like uh, quite uh, wide because I like all range of works. I, I love versatility. And even though I feel like my strength, my biggest strength is like in world building, I love, for instance, designing like spaceships, you know, so. Now, do you have to have an understanding of like of the actual like mechanics of, of certain vehicles to do that? Um, or is that something that you can just overpass and just sort of figure out how to do like the angles of a ship or whatever. I, I used to, I used to um, think that it's you can, you can cheat on everything or like trick, like use tricks. Uh, but for last five years, I'm very passionate about the cars. Uh, I I collect cars and 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 I change them very very often. And actually, this sort of like a um, sparked my love for like mechanics. You know, I, I I used to love cars when I was a kid, but now I'm really into that, you know, like trying to understand all sorts of like uh, mechanisms and like uh, I'm being up to date, like with the technology and yeah, everything. So it, it definitely helps these days when I have to design a uh, ship because of course uh, the rules are uh, the same as, as, as they are in the real life, you know, like uh, you don't design spaceship without actually understanding how uh, for instance, uh, propulsion or uh, how the engine intakes, you know, uh, work, you know, so like I try to get very deep before I even start sketching out. So my research let me prepare like a, and create like a designs that are believable. That's a, yeah, I mean, I know you love cars. I saw that footage of you uh, spinning out your Audi. It, it's, it's terrifying. <laughs> <You're> just like. <laughs> In the snow, I'm thinking that's not good. That's not good. Oh, was, I mean, you you like to do the you like the speed uh, race and all that kind of stuff. Uh, like more more and more, I try to limit that because uh, I was in 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 a very like uh, dangerous moments. Uh, twice I got a I had an accident. Uh, fortunately, not from my fault, and fortunately, I'm all good. But it was terrifying enough, so you don't really need to watch out on yourself only you have to watch out mm. the others on the road so i don't really speed up that much uh, anymore as i used to uh, i rather play with it like locally as you see like some drifting here and there or like uh i'm very passionate about like changing like exhaust uh, to make it sound more deep uh, uh. all those things so of course, not not trying to like uh, disturb people like my neighbors, <laughs> but, 
doing it all in a in a in a certain limits, but uh, it's it's all a passion and. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe one day I would love to try like a, going to the to the track and and race because it's much safer if you go for a professional track to to speed your car rather than just try doing that on the road because there is a lot of people on like that on the roads and that's why we have still like a lot of accidents, you know. So yeah, yeah, because it's uh the, those those raceways are designed for cars to go fast. Exactly. So it's it's much better if you wanna. If you just want to use your car and if you want to just like uh, release all the energy or like a bad negative energy or you want to really just try to feel the speed, it's it's better to go for like some pre-prepared like track, you know, on that. So, so and uh, one of the things I found interesting, okay, so you got, you you studied uh, art and, and, and for your postgraduate, you studied for college, you went to an art school, correct? I, I was, uh, the beginning I was, uh, at high school, at high school, I was in uh, math and physics class. I graduated from there, and then I, I didn't want to go actually like that much. Like my parents uh, sort of like encouraged me to do. Like in Poland, you still have this sort of like mindset. You have to finish studies before getting work, job, and and all that. So they encouraged me to go to finer school, and I basically I went there and I studied there. Uh, sort of like being uh, active for like two years um, but I just I just did the minimum to to basically pass on uh, to be honest uh, because I was already uh, getting prepared for like concept art field and I got into concept art uh, position on my third year so basically since then I wasn't very active at all and I was the, the worst student uh, you know like always inactive like always abroad because i had to move to, to uk to work for uh, on a on a sony project and and i wasn't really studying actively so i i know how it might be frustrating for my teachers but you know in the end that's why i sort of feel like i'm still a hundred percent uh self-thought because i i just did it i just had to finish that because my parents wanted me to do that and when I came back from UK, by the end of my third year at the, at, the, at the studies, I had to catch up on everything within like a month or something. So I did like all the drawings in it and all the exams uh, on art of history, uh, of the history of art and all that I had to basically catch up, catch up on. But the last two years when I had like a great promoter uh, before master's degree and he said like, Derek, do what, whatever you want. You don't need to go to the school do your career and we'll we'll make it you know so i had such luck that uh, this guy let me go my own path and i did like a the final exam i just basically did like a public talk um, when the teachers could ask me questions and i showed all my portfolio all my professional work uh, all my sort of like journey um so they didn't Fortunately, did any problems to that? Of course, I had a lot along the way because I was dropped off the school. I was basically fired from school like uh, three or four times along the way. So I had to pay it back to be back on the list. But I promised to my parents and to my girlfriend at the time, and I had to do that. So, uh, so yeah, I wasn't active. That's why I always not really. I cannot really tell that I was a student because it would be harming for them and for for myself because. Everything that I learned was basically uh, made within my uh, commercial work. You know, I, I these days even you know I have some tasks that that are relatively new to me, and I treat my my commercial tasks as my lesson. You know, as part of my uh, education. So I'm still self educating all the time, even though I have a school right now and I teach people. I right. I love I love yeah uh, learning on my own because there is always something to learn, you know, like you're never going to be perfect. That's for sure. So. Well, do you think that you have maybe something that most people don't have because you feel, I, I've read that you feel that you do not think that art school is necessary. And yet, like you said, you, you are teaching art to, to, you know, new students and, and maybe you have something that, that other people don't have as far as maybe being able to pick up art the way that other people might need to study to do. I think one of the things uh, 
is that I was always stubborn and I was sort of like self-driven. So I didn't really need any push from outside to, hey, Derek, like you have potential, you, you gotta keep on working. So you enter the industry. I didn't think about it at all in the beginning. You know, I didn't really plan to be a professional artist. You know, I just kept on doing that because I loved it. You know, and I sacrificed everything. You know, like relationships, like uh, health, and everything because it was my passion. Nothing, nothing less, nothing more. So it clicked, and and when I got to this field, uh, and all that year, all those years of learning and self teaching is like. I know what I can teach people that uh, so they can avoid mistakes I, I did, you know, going to art school. So um, it's a, these days when I teach, it's more like I teach exactly what is important in the industry. So we, we, we teach like uh, the program that's like uh, very focused on concept art and illustration. And you don't really need to worry about or like learn about things that are not interesting for you right it's like so if i compare it to like a normal um, national art school it's of course much uh, much uh, shorter in like uh, my school it's like more like a very fast intense uh, courses mm -hmm. and it's just directed to people who really know what they want like if they want to pick up like uh, illustration field they go for full in for full term, but they are focused on advanced digital painting, for instance. If they want to pick up to be an environment designer, they can do like only environment design class, or they can do full term and they can also learn like the basics of vehicle designs or perspective and all that. So we sort of created the school um, in a way that it teaches uh, people who want to be self self thought and. Not gonna lie, these days it's much um, more focused on like people who are uh, taking a short courses to get like as much knowledge within a short amount of time, rather than just graduating from like five years or or so studies. You know, especially okay. in our art field. Of course, you cannot compare it, for instance, to medical studies when you really have to go for like hard and long studies for like five, seven years. It's like a, it's art, so we don't save lives. We we do we do we do pretty pictures. We sometimes, of course, do more uh, responsible tasks, but uh, it's it's all fun. It's all entertainment, right? No, you never know. I mean, people like art. I mean, I think music and art has inspired me to to do things that have led to good things. So you know, in a way, I mean, it's not as intense or as immediate as a heart surgeon, but you know, don't sell yourself short. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So um, yeah, thank you for the question. I think it's a very good one. Um, and what I find fascinating is that, and I also read that you you um, were a big proponent for digital art in your at a time when you were working on projects. I think it was in school where you had to sort of push up against the powers that be that were not really interested in digital, and you you actually made some like uh, some headway for digital art being you know something that was accepted. Um, is that yeah. is what what was what happened there? Yeah, I think that was at the time that I uh, I was already working abroad, and and every time that I came back to school for like uh, you know I sometimes flew over to to meet with like some teacher or like uh, you know just pass some exam, and every time that they look at me like oh this guy you know like it's like they 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 couldn't stand it at the beginning that you can do digital art and build a successful career you know but after a while i was ex exhibiting uh, like a big canvas uh, prints at school and and at the beginning there was like a lot of uh, hate from them because they they were sort of like they were not um, interested in progression you know they 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 sort of like are like minded, there are those people who are left in like uh, 80s, 90s, you know, they didn't want to change. And it's like unavoidable, un inevitable, you know, it's, you have to go with time, you have to move on. So I did, a, I did those exhibitions with like a big print and at the beginning they couldn't stand it. But after a while, man, when I le left the school, when I graduated and they saw that I, I'm, I'm still going strong like uh, and evolving uh, with my career. They even start like, uh, uh, they even ask me if I want to run like a digital digital class, 
you know, or like uh, they, they, I saw some of the teachers that were always against that. They started like doing exhibitions with the prints of their work, which show, which sort of sh show that uh, time move on and they had to accept it, you know? Do you think that's because that, do you think that's because they did, they accepted it or because you are, you know, you got really famous and you were working on big stuff and they kind of were like wanting to be attached to your name? I think it might be both actually, because uh, I don't want to badmouth about anyone, but uh, I saw sometimes that they were posting like, oh, like this is our student, like, and he did that. It's like, like you never really called me your student, you know. You 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 kind of fired me a lot of times, and now they they just wanted to get attached to that. And sometimes you you met those people like, uh, and and they are like, uh, it's like they are nice to you in person, but you know it's not it's not very uh, you know honest. I, yeah, I too met I, I yeah I I met a few teachers there that were amazing, and one of that guy was like. I told you that promoter and he was like giving me a like do whatever you want like i'm not gonna block you off or i'm not gonna stop you from doing what you're doing because he believed in that so th those people of course I, I i still keep in touch but most of them uh, were like against it and and i feel like it's a, it's a bit both as you said like they mm -hmm. want to get attached to someone who who got who, who who basically prepared the path for for the rest uh but on the other hand i see sometimes they still prefer to be in their own world and like uh pretend it never happened you know mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. i think this is like a mixture of both you know like they will pretend that it never happened like nothing like that happened we didn't have such student but sometimes you can feel that they want to get attached to that. So like, mm -hmm. it's crazy. It's yeah, like, I'm, but... not, I'm not really following what they do uh, anymore because it's, it's already been a, like a few years. But I, I get a feeling how it is, you know? Yeah, they always say that the best revenge is success that you can, mm -hmm. you know. So I never really fought with them. Like, you know, like do whatever you want. Like, I'm, of course, uh, I, I'm not going to get into like any fights or like, I don't care. Like I'm doing my stuff, and I'm losing my energy on something that's uh, important to me. Mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. it, because then I don't really feel like I lost energy. I used the energy for a good uh, reason, you know. Right. Um, one of the things that I'm well, I guess I'm jumping ahead here, but um, I I wanted to know um, what was it that brought you into Magic: The Gathering? Because you had already been a you know pretty established by then. You were working on some pretty big properties, uh, and what led to you? getting involved with Magic the Gathering? Um, I remember when I, uh, I submitted a couple of times uh, for Magic, I thought that it was about time to try that because uh, before I got into concept art field, I was doing illustrations. So for me, naturally, it, I wanted to have that, like, uh, I wanted to have that, you know, um, how to say that? Uh, I, I, I had the list of the clients that I wanted to work with, you know, mm -hmm. when, when I was starting out and I could just basically cross like the ne this, this name, I just already worked with them. So like the bucket list, like you yeah, wanted bucket, to. Exactly. Bucket list. So I think uh, Wizards was still one of those that I didn't really work with. And since I don't, I didn't really apply uh, for work at the time um, to concept art studios because they sort of like found me through our station or Facebook or whatever. Um, I thought that, you know, at the time the uh, wizards still didn't reach out to me. So like, I didn't feel like any, anyone special, don't get me wrong, but I was like, but I have such a, I have so much experience in illustration. It's, it was much, I was much more experienced in illustration than in concept art. So I thought, yeah, I would love to try that, you know, like having your, your art on on such iconic uh, card game that I basically had some guy um, I, I knew some guy when I was a kid and he was collecting magic cards so I was like having this you know your artwork on something such iconic that every corner of the world has uh, some fan base uh, of them that would be awesome so I sent my stuff a couple times and they never replied so I think once I actually <laughs> 
I actually reply to their automatic uh, inbox like, oh guys, maybe you should just, uh, you know, like um, be more precise what I'm doing wrong. Why, if, if I suck, just let me know, you know, and all those things. And a couple of weeks later, they reach out to me like, not, like I never reach, reach out to them. So like some uh, art director that uh, probably either picked up my work from our station or so, they reach out to me and I was like, I was so hyped. And of course I accepted uh, immediately. So uh, I think my first card was- uh, The Smash uh, to smith Smithereens, was it? The it was one of the first, but there was also the Nulls, uh, Full Color. Oh, okay. All right, the Vampire Shaman one. Yeah, that's that's a great card. It's very, uh, very dark. It's very dark as well. <laughs> I mean, you get, you kind of sort of are like a bit of a vampire guy for magic. I mean, you get a lot of cool vampires that you've gotten to yeah. illustrate. And you think, and you do you think that's because of where you grew up and you had all those castles around you and you sort of just could get into the whole vampire vibe? It might be. And, and my my beginnings, my my uh, my initial works in my portfolios were always more dark in tone. You know, like uh, very heavy tone, very dim down lighting. You know, like sunsets and uh, aggressive clouds and all that it, it might be it might be why uh, a lot of uh, cards are basically um, very sorry very dark in tone like I guess one of the uh, one of the brightest is actually shadow of the grave and mm -hmm. this card is very bright but the tone of the card is very is very dark yeah so. yeah yeah it's 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 an uh, it's really stunning and I also like the fact that you like to sort of use that 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 dramatic lighting for effect now one that was interesting was and i might mispronounce it but the twins of mora estate with mm -hmm. the two little girl vampires and yeah. i don't think you can see it on the actual card itself but you you did it as though the you see a dead body with its hand yeah. like and, yeah. and i don't think that's visible on the card is it probably not because it's like a very small and uh you you, you could see that but it's very if i look at it right now and the uh, uh on the uh, gather um, website. The gatherings, yeah. Yeah, it's very, it's very small. Like I feel, um, I think my beginnings with magic were sort of like a tough because I had to make compositions that are readable from very far on a small distance, you know, and on, mm -hmm. on, the, on the small, on the small car. Right. And and I love doing uh, like big wraparound scenes and like uh, horizontal cinematic views and all that. So for the beginning, it's it's very it was very hard for me to 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 get to this point to understand how to build compositions. So some of the older cards still have like maybe not very readable elements, but fortunately enough, I can post like a bigger pictures on my website, and and then you see all those little de details because yeah, I know it's you know it's a card, and you can keep it relatively sketchy, but. I, I love adding like the story details, you know, like this is the bloody hand of the guy that's like laying in the foreground, like sort of like blurred out. Uh, like a camera, just, like almost like a camera took a picture of it. Like, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like a, a aperture is like getting like this sort of like a, a, a blurry effect. It, it sort of like gives you that extra mood and, and the story to the card, which I think and I hope that, makes the card much more interesting besides just the art that based on the description so and what's also interesting is the use of i, I mean it i can't tell is it the moon that's that bright but it almost looks like it's sunlight out in while the girls are outside and yeah, was it, that it, just... it, it, it's very stylized moon to to make it like a it's like some hollywood movies you know right especially okay in, the, in those old ones you you the moon was such intense, you, you, you almost had like a big lamp, you know, so. Right, right, yeah, so it's almost like it, if the photograph was taken with like a, like a high exposure. Uh, exactly, and yeah. I gotcha, okay, and one of the things also that's interesting is the way you choose when to use like a very detailed like piece of like work as opposed to when you do broader sketches like for a fer feral abomination. It's interesting where you took bro broad strokes and where you go really, really focused and I'm curious, mm -hmm. what 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 determines that? Do you do you do the piece and then like shrink it down to see how it looks? And what what kind of choices uh, get made to to do those? 
sometimes it's about the composition itself and and you you can you can get a sense of if the card looks good and and the, on the thumbnail and you don't, sometimes you add details it might be uh, counterproductive but sometimes you add details to save the card to make it like more striking because my, maybe the composition is not as iconic and you basically need like more details so the eye is being caught and you get you got a little bit more uh, you build the more uh, attention around the piece but sometimes the composition is so um, iconic epic in scale that you don't really need to put too many details because it has already a lot of elements and a lot of things is for instance hidden in the atmosphere so you don't really need to to play with too many details so this was one of the pieces that I felt that the composition was already uh, set sit very well, and I didn't need that much details because this guy is like semi hidden in the in the in the fog, and and all the crazy you know like shapes of the of of his tentacles along with the branches of the trees, it builds like a good composition. So if I kept on adding details, it might be it might lose that. Um, the dynamics and mm -hmm. and the, the the essence of the depth, you know, because sometimes more detail is making the picture much flattened, much more like a dull and like a less less uh, less impressive. Do you design the creatures that you? Because you you know you you've got your you've got a good background in, in as far as working on stuff like uh, the aliens and predators uh, IPs. Do you design the monsters that are? Um, on some of your cards, like through the breach, is it's they're just striking, and I wonder how much of that is is direction from wizards versus where do you get to exercise your creative muscles? For 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 uh, for every world, we got like a world uh, sort of like document that that world guide document that that sort of like flesh out like a crush, crucial designs or crucial elements that they want to have on 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 the designs. But a lot of times, actually, you have such a freedom. And OK, you have to remember that this guy needed to look like a big insect and had like this sort of like an arm head. But I, I, was, I was able to, to play with, with, the, with the shapes or additional details. So many times, it, it goes like uh, you design the creature from the beginning, you know? So you have certain guidelines. But I think it's. Uh, it's half half, you know. Sometimes you you are very uh, structured about. They are very structured about the brief. Sometimes they give you such uh, freedom that you design from scratch. So, I think it's uh, it's uh, in between. Yeah, because the um also one that you did the Markov dread dreadnought is uh is very interesting in a sense that most of the Magic Gathering vampires are not gross or grotesque looking, and and yours is like it's one of those like like a feral vampires. And it almost looks like the previous version that you had done of it, you were going for maybe more of a traditional sort of like Dracula vampire, and it mm -hmm. and it changed. Um, what brought those changes about? Uh, I think for the Markov, they 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 had some uh, pretty uh, pretty strict guidelines regarding like uh, uh, what sort of like uniform he could have and in what style. And there might be some uh, tweaks here and there and adjustments that, that I came up with. But it was pretty much straightforward uh, from the brief. You know, sometimes uh, it's like a, like night evil predator, right? They they gave you, for instance, they gave me a lot of freedom, so I could come up with like ideas for like if I wanted to have like some extra drapery or extra like uh, patterns on on his clock or whatever. So um, you see, sometimes it's like a it's a big contrast between the be, between the tasks. Yeah, and, and, the, and, and the, thing, the funny thing actually is because I was already um, more well known by doing, um, you know, worlds and environments, and I still got to work on a lot of characters for yeah. magic. So it's sort of, it sort of is a good uh, lesson for me as well because I can train uh, character design and creature design. You know, so mm -hmm. as I told you before, I treat every task as a lesson. So do you um do you have any characters that you would love to get a crack at if you could like a say a planeswalker or or a character that you are a fan of? Um 
I don't know. Like, uh, I really, I, I think from those that I worked on, I think my favorite ones definitely are are the vampires. Uh, it, it's it's as you said with with the spirit of my work. I guess it, it's so close to myself that uh, I, I'm by no means I'm not a vampire or like I I'm basically a night uh, guy. Like I love working at night and. Of course, I try to change it um, lately because uh, you're not young anymore, like uh, <laughs> forever. So, uh, but I loved like those like a night, um, you know, vampires cars because I could not only build a new character, but I could set it in the world that's very inspiring to me. You know, so gothical churches and and cathedrals in the background, like a uh, nice and lit. Um, uh, city that's that's awesome so if i had a chance to work on more uh vampires i would be all in so that's awesome um and then what's really cool is you you have a pretty uh you have a pretty awesome career going on with uh with working on films um and how did you get involved with being a concept artist and what was what was your what was your experience like doing doing something for like the maze runner where it's it's a huge project and you've got all of this you know different kind of responsibility. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, my actually Maze Runner uh, was was my was my first proper movie project. I worked directly with the uh, produce, producing company uh, and the the director because I worked before on Robin Hood and King Arthur mm -hmm. along some others uh, probably some movies that are not released at all because I also did a lot of like canceled projects uh, uh, throughout the years. But all that work prior uh, Maze Runner was done uh, for VFX companies like uh, Framestore or MPC or ILM. You work for those guys, but these guys are basically third part companies. They are not directly the companies that are publishing the movie like Century Fox or um, not Century Fox anymore, it's Century Studio, uh, like a Disney or like a Legendary. They are all the companies that if you work with them directly, it's working directly for the movie. But if you work for VFX companies, you always go for like a chain of other, you know, sub companies. So uh, Maze Runner was the first one because uh, actually West Ball, which was director, he found my works uh, on art station and he messaged me. And then a couple of days later, we, we scheduled a call on Skype and we started talking and he pre presented me the idea of what he wanted me to do. Like uh, we have this, uh, we have this city for the final, uh, uh, final uh, from the trilogy, final movie from the trilogy. And we want you to design it. So I started sketching and he did like a lot of video feedback. We, we catch up on the calls like every, every second day on Skype or by the end of the week, I was presenting the bunch of concepts and he sent me, for instance, the pictures of, from Vancouver that he took them himself and he wanted me to do like set extensions. So I basically started with the photograph, for instance, of the real street and he wanted me to build the whole movie set on top and how it would look for the in the final frame. So this was actually amazing, you know, like a world building with the first proper movie experience. And that's how it started because for people from Europe or from, uh, yeah, from Europe, basically, you you have almost like a maybe couple percent of chance to work directly with the director because in States they have a, a art director's guild and they hire mostly artists from US. Uh, so mm -hmm. the residents, the residents of, uh, from, uh, from US that are part of that union. And of course, if you are in Europe, you cannot be part of the union. So um, I was lucky enough that the director found me and he said like, okay, you know, fuck it, let's go <laughs> this way. And, and let's, I want to hire you. So as, uh, 20th Century Fox at the time hired me uh, on the freelance basis, but I was uh, the real staff member, and uh, and that was that was awesome because uh, sometimes it shows that um, if you are if you, if someone wants you very much, they don't care if you are not part of the union. They want to get you on board, and that's how it works. So 
that was amazing because for me it was a breakthrough for the movie uh, industry. Yeah, and that's a really interesting way that he was able to, you were able to give him as a director exactly what he wanted by taking the photo. And, that, and, and is that called photo bashing when you, you put a photo in and, and then work around it? Is that what that is? Oh, of course. It, it's one of the techniques that we use very often. Uh, it was the task it, itself, uh, we call it like set extension. Mm -hmm. So you, you had a certain part of location that they can build or they can use from real world and and record or 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 film the scene in in that in that scenery but the rest was cg generated but mm -hmm. how it was generated it had to be dictated by my concepts for instance so i was designing that space that they basically put and cg later on um, and this was basically called set extension so we can call it like matte painting you can call it photo bashing designing on top like yeah, like in, in this field, there is like, a, no, no matter what tool you use, like these days I, for instance, use a lot of 3D as well. You know, I have to, for instance, lately I design vehicles. So I start with traditional 2D sketching uh, on, on tablet. So I sketch out uh, my designs, then the clients approve it or not. And we pick up what, what they want to go with. And if they decide on the specific shape, I build this shape in 3D and then I go back to Photoshop and draw again on top with the details. Then they approve it again. And then I can either add those details in, in Photoshop in 2D or I can keep on adding more details in 3D to have the final presentation, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, and then what led to you, I mean, you must have gotten a, you know, a great relationship because then you got to work on, which unfortunately it, it never got, um, it, it got axed by, by, because of a company merger, but the movie Mouse Guard, it looked so yeah. cool. It looked so cool. I mean, it's a damn shame that that, you know, didn't get to see it because uh, the cast had already been involved. It was like. It's exactly. Like, thank you very much. I think. To be honest, I think still till this day, it was my favorite project. Like my, I mean, it, in terms of like uh, how much artistic freedom for such commercial and huge project we had as an as an artist, it was incredible. You know, so I was a big fan when I got to know the comic, the story of that, and I was so hyped uh, designing the world. Like. I was responsible for everything, you know, for prop designs, for world building, for key arts, for some uh, vehicles, and it was it was incredible. Like definitely my most, uh, uh, I would say, most favorite artistic uh, project uh, when it comes to commercial projects. So if it was, yeah, it, it was. You didn't feel it's like professional project uh, in terms of like you had someone to tell you what to do. Right. You had so much freedom that uh, we could sit down and we could show our art and the director was inspired, like 3D artists were inspired and we could exchange files, like 3D files they sent me, for instance, and animations and parts of the location they built on, uh, based on my concepts. It was amazing, you know, like seeing how those things were got into life and when I found out that it was X, man, I felt like someone just stabbed me in the heart, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's that. I mean, that really truly sucks because it's it's like you don't really get that option to do that, right? You don't get creative freedom a lot of times, especially in, in major motion pictures. And so that had to like, I mean, I, my, I feel for you there. And um, if there's any like pieces of your work that you haven't put out uh, from that, I'd love to see any and just any sort of stills that you got lying around because I want people to understand that this was like a fully uh, realized yeah uh, project that got that got canceled only because of internal like merging it was not because the there was a problem with the film or the actors or whatever it yeah, was exactly. it was a more of a political thing or you know of that kind of nature. And yeah, so, I think if it wasn't, if the Fox was still uh, independent by that time, I think they would successfully release the movie, you know? So, yeah, it's, and I mean, I know that there probably is a reason why the why, um, West can't d d divulge why it was, but they said they had their reasons, and I'm like, well, what's the reason? I mean, other than yeah. you had, what, another movie that you wanted to, to, 
to you know publicize and that was taking it over well i hope that movie bombed that's what i say yeah i think uh they even tried like uh got like um some other options i think from netflix or 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 some other companies but uh i i don't know where it is right now it's like uh wes told me that it's like you know never stop uh, dreaming so right. all the work that's been done it's it's stored somewhere you know so like uh who knows maybe one yeah, day right yeah, maybe you could, maybe there's some sort of like, uh, there's some way to resuscitate it. Uh, because, you know, that happens all the time where uh, like, say musicians will buy back the original recordings from studios to, to re-release yeah. something that they couldn't. So yeah, I guess it never hurts to to hold out hope. And it really is genuinely cool. Looking. I thought this, yeah. I, I, I'm like, when is this coming out? And then I was like, it's, it's not because on IMDb, it says announced and I got so excited. And then, and then I was crushed. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, um, same, same here. Like, uh, I remember the day that I opened like Twitter and it's like, uh, th there was information that it got canceled. Like, and uh, this was like a lot of movies, I guess, and projects yeah. at the time after the merge was over, um, they, they canceled everything. Like, uh, yeah. uh, quite a lot of like, uh, potential good movies, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's only because people who come on have their own agendas that they want to work on. And that's, that's really it. And it's bullshit because, mm. you know, I mean, they do that a lot in the music industry where if you sign with somebody and then they leave the company and a new like head comes in, they're promoting the people they want to sign and, and mm. they, they will put you aside. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's bullshit, but luckily you're, you're still going strong. You, you, uh, do concept art. You do the title sequence for, for Mindhunter. Yes, uh, remember those uh, those like snapshots of like uh, like uh, the dead people, uh, yeah, like like the zooms, and they uh, I I had the I had the one of my tasks was I, I got like received uh, like those actors that were playing those dead bodies uh, shot on a green screen, like the close up zooms on the face, like the hands, and and my task was actually design how uh, post effects of the bo uh, dead bodies of the wounds of like uh, the cats uh, the worms walking around how it would look like so it was the most disgusting work <laughs> all, like ever uh, the first day when I when I was in, on to like I could only I could only manage to go through Google images for like oh god because I had to find all those gore stuff and it had to be photographic so i i had to use like real elements yeah man it was it was disaster but the second and the third day of work uh, i i got into but uh definitely one of the strangest uh yeah strangest thing luckily it was uh, i was working closely um with the notes from david fincher which was uh which was uh, pretty fun you know that's crazy because he was basically doing uh, notes on top of my uh, my concept, so. Yeah, and like David Fincher is like, I mean, talk about iconic. I mean, he's like, he's one of the greats and he's he's been good ever since the beginning. I mean, I remember when he did Paula Abdul's video for Cold Hearted, like he did yeah. it, the music video. And like, even back then, like it was just like, that guy could direct, like just, he can direct. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of, of his movies as well. Uh, amazing director. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome, and that you get to I mean, it must be crazy to get notes from David Fincher, or like when you go to see the uh, the Maze Runner in the in the theater, and, and you're seeing on the big screen. The yeah, man, world. I was I was waiting for the last credit uh, credit screen, and I remember it it went so fast, and I was so. I was so, uh, you know, nervous and me and my, my girlfriend, we were trying to find my name and it was going too fast. And I was like, no, like I, I couldn't see anything, but I later like uh, played some copy of, of that. And yeah, I found myself. So it was like, you know, like the other, the other achievement unlocked, you know? So yeah, very, yeah. Very crazy times. 
so yeah it's like you got you got yourself an imdb page you do you got yourself a page you got to add a photo onto your profile there though because you don't have a photo going on you yeah get... I, I i might upload it once so yeah because i mean like it makes it just makes you look cooler i mean you know you gotta have a photo it's or at least yeah, a... it's not some unknown guy <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, and what's also really cool is you're working on, you're working on um, the Love, Death and Robots. And so between that and uh, Magic the Gathering, you worked with the two people who you helped co-found Level Up with, which is pretty random, right? I mean, like, you end up yeah. being co-workers on two separate things. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, how did you guys uh, get to know each other? Were you, were you, were you, uh, did you have a relationship prior to starting that? Or did you get connected because of the work? Uh, actually, uh, I met uh, w the first guy that we founded it, Wojtek, uh, together. Uh, I, I remember I called him because I knew that he was one of those uh, like young Polish guy that went to States. He was studying there for a bit uh, on some drawing atelier. And I won a contest uh, in 2013. And I won a contest uh, run by Infected by Art when I was invited to States and to present my work on Comic-Con. Wow. So uh, it was one of the first big shots and I was so scared because I never been to States. And uh, of course I was still very young back then. And, and I was like, man, it's like a totally like a new wow. world to me. And, and I was like wondering if I, how can wow. I, how can I, you know, go there, you know, how can I, uh, how can I uh, find myself in there? Of course, everything was supposed to be organized for me, but uh, I wanted to get it, the, uh, to hear experiences from someone who was there. And I knew that Wojtek, because we, we, we knew each other from Polish uh, art board, for, from uh, Polish art uh, forum. Uh, I knew that he was there because he was doing like some, um, uh, he did like a photography sort of like um, rewind, you know, of the trip. And, um, and I just called him, you know, first I messaged him, Hey man, I have some questions. Can, can I, can I, can I, uh, can I jump on a call with you on Skype? And then we, we scheduled a call on Skype and I called him and I started asking him a question and, uh, he said like, Hey, why not we, why don't we just meet up in real life? And I found out that he was living very close to me and we met the next day, uh, in, in the shopping mall. Um, sit down at McDonald's, eat a little bit and started like talking. He showed me, he, he, told, he told me his experiences about the trip. And um, we, we thought that, hey man, we have like some good ideas coming, going on. So why don't we just start something like an art group? Uh, because we were still relatively new and uh, to, the, to the market and we weren't even in concept art field yet. So we were like a, newbies you know back then and we met the other day uh, at his place and we came up with all with all the level up group we came up with logo we did everything by one day we, within one day and the group started growing on facebook and i think till this day it's the biggest art group in facebook on, on yeah facebook. it's it's huge and um it it's it attracted all these huge names too as well to to, yeah. to give and and we we had the ideas going on like oh maybe we should go and do like some podcasts and like invite people that are inspiration for us and all that so we started like uh, teasing uh, on the group that we might launch a podcast you know and we started like uh, doing that and and it was the first podcast on YouTube for art community and it was the biggest and like wow. uh, very fast growing uh, and. Of, of course, a couple of years later, everyone wanted to do their own podcast and they followed uh, uh, in the footsteps of Level Up, but nothing was that close to that, you know, because we, we, we created the experience because we were still unexperienced, you know, so we were inviting guys like uh, the guests who were our idols and who we look up to and we were uh, hosts, but we were part of the audience because we were so un so unexperienced, like our audience, and we grew along with the audience. So our That's cool. our, our art career started from there, and of course we got to know all those like uh, production tips and like um, how everything looks from from behind the scenes and and what's not. 
and um, and after like I think ten or twelve ep episodes, we uh, we did another uh, one with like uh, Jonas. He was one of our guests, and and then he reached out to us after the session, and he had a lot of fun, and he was already working in the industry, so he brought a lot of attention to our podcast, and he asked if he can join our team. In the beginning, of course, like we didn't want to expand the team, but since he had he was so generous and he he brought a lot of attention to the podcast, like we we decided to expand the team of three of us. And ever since we started doing that all together, until we sort of like uh, burned out and we did. You guys, yeah, you got so yeah. busy doing other things that you couldn't. Yeah, keep and, it up. and we we wanted to stop it at the moment that people are still expecting us to come back rather than stop it because people don't uh, cannot stand us, us anymore you know so we wanted to cut it in the best moment when we were on the peak so right. uh, and is there ever a chance like who knows maybe in the future you guys do something like a retrospective where you talk about your careers and and maybe like i mean who knows it's like it's not like you all are you know there was like a breakup or something yeah, probably, probably uh, not through Level Up, but we are still uh, in contact. So uh, we are we are good friends, and we are in touch, and we might do something, you know, one day together. Like who knows? Yeah, is that would was would working on that? Did that help you choose the or make the decision to start um, Focal Points and and uh, be you know co-found that, uh, which is really cool. And again, I think that. It's interesting that you are somebody who is self-taught and yet you became a teacher, which I really feel like you're you're going to probably change a young person's point of view of that, you know, having having some sort of foundation of education is useful because it sounds like you just had a bunch of asshole teachers that you know, kind of were just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's sort of uh, that's sort of how it is, how, how you said that. Uh, but um at the time, no. Like I, when I when we were running the lab, I was for me it was a lesson of life as well because I couldn't I, I was not very fluent in talking in English, so I had to learn all that and it was a lot of like a, it was a big lesson for all of us, you know, like to get in, into industry, to practice language, and to get to know the industry tips and all that. Uh, but I didn't really think about running the school at the time. I I was. I was pretty sure about launching the school after my mentorships. I did a lot of mentorships and they were uh, pretty successful. And I had this friend, Mikkel, Mikkel Kuz, an amazing concept artist. And we always wanted to do something together. Like uh, we had such different styles. We didn't probably want to do like a studio together, but we wanted to do something that uh, that gives us a lot of excitement, which was, uh, which was teaching because we did a lot of workshops. and. So some workshops we did together, and uh, like why not to run the school, you know? So uh, he was uh, he was done with some of his contracts, and he was still like um, he was like a like a free uh, like a like a free guy in, in uh, like flying around the Europe. So I was like, hey man, like why don't you move to Poland? Why don't you move to Poland? Because I have connections, and we can we can launch a school here. So. He moved here. Uh, he lives in Poland already, um, and we 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 launched the school. It, it was like a very very easy decision for us. We we did like some, we did of, we did of course a lot of like brainstorm. We did a lot of like uh, night chats. Uh, we met up uh, many times and like figuring out the name, the logo, and everything. Uh, because I wanted to be as uh, as iconic in name like Level Up, and it was. Oh, it was. It had to be something connected to to art and focal point. Of course, is very art oriented. You mm -hmm. you you have it in photography. You have it in illustration. You have it in painting, in drawing. Like uh, yeah, why not to do like focal point? And then later on, we added like a school uh, to that name. And yeah, now it's a FPS focal point school, uh, which is a very easy name and. Uh, and it got a lot of attention, and, and 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 these days, of course, because of COVID, we we had slowed down a little bit. Right. But we decided we cannot wait any longer to resume the school because we were always standing for like physical aspects. So 
we wanted to do it physically. But we said like, no, we cannot wait any longer. Like it's, it's part of our business, but we want, to, we want to provide the knowledge. We don't want to wait forever until everything gets back to normal. So we decided that we want to offer hybrid education. So for those who can and who are vaccinated and who can come to Poland, they can be physical with us because we will be still doing classes in, in, our, in our location. But for those who can't, for some reason, or are afraid, they can join us through online uh, service. And it's real time. They, they will join us uh, to the class that, that will be uh, held uh, in the class of, in the, in, on the location of the school. Mm -hmm. So it will be all sync up together. And uh, we are still figuring out, so figuring out some technical aspects. But I think this term will be actually the biggest day. And we have a lot of people and still a lot of people who are applying for scholarships because we announced also contests for scholarships. Uh, so by the end of this week, they can submit their work on the given task and they can win a full term at Focal Point School. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'll have to put something about that in, 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 the, uh, in the, the link. Um, that's really cool. And um, I'm almost done with you. I've got uh, just one more uh, question about about uh, magic and then uh i will let you go on your merry way you can crank your fan up to a full blast um it's uh so my question is do you are you working on any i know you can't give away specifics but are there any magic cards that are being worked on for upcoming sets yes yes um yeah. how many are there that would you say uh, that are being made for for this task uh i probably shouldn't say that but i'm a little bit behind the time already <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I need to catch up on that, but I have five uh, already approved. I need to finalize them. So awesome, awesome. It's five and brand new cards. That's amazing. That's awesome. And is there anything else that you are working on that you would like to uh, get a chance to, to talk about before I let you go? Uh, yeah, like you th th there are of course are projects, but uh, th they are under NDA, uh, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Well, that, that's good. That's good. You want them but to be NDA. Like, yeah, that but, means big. But, but but for those who are interested and maybe they don't have like money to come to the school or they uh, they have a hard time and they want to uh, try their themselves in uh, in such like intense courses, uh, I encourage you. You have uh, almost a week, so I encourage you to take part in our scholarships. I think that's uh, I saw already some submissions. They're gonna be so good you know like people are doing their best and they sacrifice all the time to to prepare like a like amazing stuff so for for the artists who are watching us and who are interested in, in interested in concept art or illustration uh yeah head over to to our focal point school website and go to scholarships uh, uh sub sub uh, subtitle so you you can find all the information there that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for t taking the time to talk to me today. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Thank you very much, man, for uh, in interviewing me and for inviting. Amazing question, uh, amazing podcast. Let me know when it goes up. Uh, I will definitely uh, share the word. All right. Thank you so much. I will definitely, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, man. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, that was a fun interview. Un amor que sabonio de mi de sentano mis sentidos anhelan un corazón prohibidos. You stuck the fork in the toaster again? Possibly. I can't be sure. But if I did, I would like to point out that the toaster company should put a warning out for people or vampires that they can be electrocuted that way. Did you read the instructions? Of course not. Instructions are for instructing, not for warning. Willst du bist der Totenscheide, sie lieben auf und schlägt den Tagen. F*** it. I'm gonna go electrocute myself until I get a more useful skill. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and until next time, exire beo. <laughs>